guys, it's Amber from The Sensible Mama and I know this is a completely weird, different setup for me. I'm actually sitting like right at the garage door opening to my warehouse here at Sensible Mama headquarters. And honestly, I just needed to feel outside even though I'm not fully outside. <laughs> We've had really bad weather here in Georgia the last couple of days. We haven't been able to be out and I'm over it. So the sun is finally shining. I just thought, I just, well, like I want some fresh air and not to be cooped up in my office. I'm hoping that you're gonna be able to hear like the trees rustling and the birds in the background and maybe this will make this a really nice experience for you because it's, it's definitely a nice one for me. So let's just get right into what I wanted to talk about today because I know that if I've been thinking about this silently and not speaking about it, then there's probably other people who are too. And so I figured why not just make a video about it <laughs> Maybe it's timely. Um, I've been trying to use this time of social distancing and, and quarantine and all like that to try to better myself in any way that I can. And, and that's hard. We all have to deal with mental health and emotional health too. And just weird, like, I don't know. Sometimes do we have toilet paper is more important than do I feel comfy in my jeans. But I know that a lot of us are trying really hard to better ourselves, maybe try to be more healthy, try to exercise a little bit more during this time. And that's something that I've been trying to make a priority um, over these last few weeks that we've been sheltering in place. But it has been a discouraging road so far and I've been wondering if anyone else was feeling the same way. And if so, this video is for you. Please know if you just found my channel today, this is your first video, I am absolutely not a fitness specialist, I'm not a nutritionist, I none of that. So this is not an expert level video. I'm just someone who's been into fitness most of my life. I've been an athlete most of my life. So I've had the good fortune of picking up on little nuggets here and there from people who know a lot more about this subject than I do. But I'm not here today to talk about this from the point of view of an expert. I'm really just talking about my own kind of struggles and some things that I've been doing to overcome those challenges. So I just encourage anyone who watches this video to keep in mind that what works for me may not work for you. My opinions on things might not be the same as yours and it's just important to research and, and <clears throat> make decisions that are best for you and your body, not necessarily what I say is best for mine. So let me back up to before all of this started, back when we all had our normal lives. Something that I was doing every day was like just part of my routine was that I'd get up, I would take my kids to preschool, I would come here to the warehouse, and then around one o'clock I would have to drive back and pick up my kids. And it's about an hour drive from where the preschool is to where my warehouse is, and my house is situated in between. So a lot of times my kids would be so tired from preschool that they would fall asleep in the car basically as I was getting closer to the warehouse. and. I didn't mind, it was better for all of us if my kids had a nap, so I kind of started looking forward to that time as just my me time. And almost every day for months, I would wait till they fell asleep and either, like if I thought it was gonna be a short nap, I would just pick up like a coffee from Starbucks, but never just a black coffee, it was always like a white chocolate mocha or you know, one of those really sugary drinks. Or if I thought they were gonna nap for a little bit longer, I would wait till towards the end and then I'd stop by McDonald's and I'd get myself a, a full meal and I would get them a happy meal and I would eat mine in the car and then they had a nice little surprise when they wake up, woke up. And this was like my daily thing for months. And I really think that I was just enjoying that. I, I looked forward to that so much that I didn't really care. I was starting to notice that my jeans weren't fitting as well. I was starting to just feel like, man, when I sit down, I feel like there's more rolls than I'm used to feeling here. But I wasn't ready. I just wasn't in a place to prioritize my fitness at that time. And that's something that I wanna say, first of all, before we get more than six minutes into this video, is that you don't always have to make fitness a priority. And that's not something that is popular to say. But if you're someone who you know, is still in a postpartum phase or if you're just in a time of your life where you're happy and fitness isn't your first priority, that's okay. You know, Still try to be healthy, but like you don't have to make fitness your number one priority. And for me, I was just going through a time in my life where fitness was not at the top of my mind. I was okay with you know, looking and feeling a little bit differently than I'm used to feeling, and that was just fine. And so I had kind of stopped exercising. I just had really stopped being as active as I used to be. And none of that really had come into my awareness too much until this quarantine thing happened. And, you know, everyone feels differently about whether, 
I think everyone wants to support um, local restaurants and, and businesses and things like that, but we all have different comfort levels regarding whether we want to like go through drive throughs and get deliver like food delivery and things like that. But for me personally, that has just been uncomfortable for me. I haven't felt comfortable um, eating food that I did not prepare myself. So we have not had fast food in probably over a month. We have not had takeout from a restaurant in over a month. We've just been eating things that we have at home. And, and in general, it's just been a more healthy diet. And since cutting out, in particular, fast food, I won't blame like restaurant food for this, but fast food like McDonald's and Wendy's and Burger King, Chick-fil-A, since cutting all that out of my diet, I have noticed several things. Probably the most prominent one is that my energy level is up and therefore my desire to exercise is up. And I really think that I would never have, I think it was all of that garbage that I was eating, um, you know, getting fast food every single day that was making me so lethargic and taking away my desire to exercise. And once I stopped eating that, I wanted to work out again. And so I said, okay, this is great. I'm feeling better. I'm just, I feel less lethargic. I feel less flabby. Like I'm going to, I'm going to start exercising a little bit more. And for me personally, anytime I've made the decision to like focus on dropping a few pounds here and there, it's always just come off like that, like super fast, not really have to put much work into it. And this time, for whatever reason, it just was not happening. It just seemed like every day I was exercising, and I'm gonna talk about what I've been doing to exercise, but I was exercising. I had cut out a lot of bad foods for me from my diet. I was eating healthy, I was eating less, just, just in general not eating as much. And I was stagnating. I was seeing no weight loss. In fact, in some ways, for a little while, I felt like I was putting on weight. It was just bizarre. And so the past few weeks, probably I would say the first three weeks of quarantine have been immensely discouraging and frustrating for me because I've just been like, I, I'm, I've made a radical lifestyle change. You know, this was like ripping the Band-Aid off, no longer having any of the sugary, high fat foods that I was eating and still the weight is not coming off of me and that's been hard. The thing that has been encouraging is that now I'm in, I don't know if I'm in week four or week five of this. I really don't know when we started. I think we're at a little over a month at this point. I am just now starting to see weight coming off. I'm noticing it the most actually in my face, in my jawline, in my collarbones. Um, I'm just starting to like like slim back down to, to the body weight that I'm most comfortable at, having been a relatively thin, athletic built person most of my life, I'm, I'm starting to feel that now. And every day it feels like it's, it, like the, it's, what's that expression? Like a ball rolling down a hill, gathering moss or whatever. It's like, like a slingshot. Like you feel like you're moving backwards for a really, really long time with your weight journey and then you let go and it just slingshots forward. And, and that's how I feel right now. And I feel like now would be a good time to give a caveat that like I understand that I am not someone who has like weight issues and I'm not at all trying to say that I do, but we all have sort of an idea of what we want our own bodies to look like. And I just, my body has not been looking the way that I want it to look. And let's just get that out there. So I wanted to, first of all, just encourage you guys that of course everyone's body adapts differently. Everybody's body is gonna just go at its own pace. But if you've been like me and you've been kind of feeling like you've done a radical change to your lifestyle during quarantine and still aren't seeing any results, I would encourage you to keep going at it because it really does seem like a switch will just flip and all of a sudden it will start. I feel like maybe it just took my body, like my body I feel was just hanging on to all of the garbage that was in there, like was just holding on to it like almost like, okay, we're just in a state of famine is all. And soon <laughs> all of that sugary, salty, high fat stuff is gonna come back into our diet. So if we can just maintain for a little while, then this it's all gonna go back to normal. And I feel like only about a week ago, my body let the dream die and was like, okay, <laughs> like <laughs> that's not happening anymore. We're just eating the same old boring stuff every single day that's healthy for us. So let's finally let some of this weight go. That's how it's felt. So, uh, you know, hang on. If, you're, if you've been really dedicated and things aren't happening for you, my advice would be to keep going and you may see a turnaround. I did. So for the rest of this video, I wanna talk about kind of what I've been doing in terms of exercise to change up my, my routine. A lot of people ask me about my nutrition and I just, I really don't feel qualified to talk about that at all. If you wanna know in a nutshell, I've been doing, um, I've sort of been doing intermittent fasting, which is where you 
eat from 12 to 8 o'clock, like 12 p.m. to 8 o'clock p.m., and then you don't eat outside of that window. Um, and then during that window, you generally try to eat healthy, but you also eat whatever you want during that time. In terms of like actual diet and things like that, I'm not following any kind of a diet. I'm just being mindful of what I'm eating, trying to watch my fat and sugar intake, and that's really it. I'm not doing anything ornate or complicated there, and I really feel out of my element trying to give advice about nutrition, so I'm not gonna do that. What I do wanna talk about today is just some like really inexpensive and quick things that I've been doing to, to incorporate fitness into my quarantine routine because I think that we can all agree that that is a little bit challenging. When you cannot go to the gym, it is questionable whether or not you wanna be out going for an actual run out around your neighborhood or whatever. It's just complicated and so I've tried to find new inventive ways to work out and I just wanted to share those with you today because I have found them to be working. One of the first things hand down, and this isn't ex exactly about exercise, but I've been drinking a lot of water. I eat less when I'm drinking a lot of water. I feel more energized. My joints and everything feel more lubri lubricated. I'm 35 now, I have to worry about these things. Um, and overall, just like incorporating more water into my routine has just all around been a good thing. In addition to that, and I've talked about this a little bit around here, but I did purchase this $65 stair stepper from Amazon. As of today, when I'm filming this, it is sold out on Amazon. I shared the link in my uh, Facebook group and those girls bought it up. They bought not only the version that I have, but when that sold out, they also sold out the hands-free stair stepper. Um, I'm gonna link it down below so that whenever it does come back in stock, you can get it. But it's $65 and it's for that, it's really nice. It's like a, a rotating stair stepper. So you get a little bit of like a hip and lower back workout as well. It's not ornate whatsoever. It is a $65 stair stepper, but it comes with a little um, tracker that you attach to it. it. Keeps track of your time for you. It gives you an estimate of how many calories are burned. It tells you how many steps you've taken. So you really don't have to have anything else like a fitness tracker, a Fitbit, an Apple Watch, or anything like that to use it. And it's actually a pretty good workout. Now it's it's not high end. It's definitely like if you lean really far forward on it, it's gonna tip over because it's a $65 stair stepper. But I've been using mine every day for 30 minutes, sometimes twice a day for 30 minutes, and I feel like it has made a huge difference in getting my weight loss to start happening. The next thing that I did was bought a pair of roller blades. I found a really cheap, nice pair on Amazon. I'll link those down below as well. And I'm really fortunate because I have this warehouse space with a huge, like, in terms of where our inventory is and where it ends in this warehouse. I probably have two full, like, home-sized garages full of space to rollerblade in. I've been doing that when I've been here at the warehouse, but I know not everyone has that. Uh, but the cool thing about rollerblades is that you really don't even have to be rollerblading to be getting a benefit from them. I, I swear, this is the truth. <laughs> I will wear my rollerblades in my kitchen and I will just sort of like blade around the kitchen. And the cool thing is when you're standing on rollerblades, it needs to be rollerblades. You have to engage your core and your back in order to just keep your balance. And I find that I am getting like a little micro workout just while I'm like dicing onions or something like that. I'm, I'm getting a workout from just holding my body still and poised and balanced on those rollerblades. And then when I can, um, I take them out with my kids. You know, like if they're going on a little walk and I have like my husband around so that I am never in a position where I might have to get my kids out of harm's way and I'm on rollerblades. Um, you know, I'll go outside of our, our house and I'll be on my rollerblades and rollerblade around with them. And I'm getting a little bit of an exercise. It's fun, it gets me outdoors. Um, and it, it gets my adrenaline going. It just makes me happy. And I think that part of getting exercise right now in particular is it needs to be something that brings you joy and rollerblading has always brought me joy so I don't know why I had to be 35 years old to realize that that would be a really great way for me to exercise you know I think we're all wanting to get our kids outdoors it is starting to get a little bit nicer outside in some areas of the country right now you don't have to be going out on like walks around your neighborhood with your kids one of the things that I've been doing is just going for literal walks around my house. <laughs> and it doesn't sound like much, but taking my kids outside, and for me personally, I like to let them get on their little four-wheeler, and I'll just let them go in circles around the house, and I'll usually get a thousand or so steps in just doing that. 
And yeah, I'm not getting my heart rate up too much. I'm, I'm not getting a sweat going, but I'm outdoors. I'm with my kids. They're having a good time and I'm getting some exercise. And it's something that you can do under quarantine that is still exercise. If you're comfortable getting your kids out and about, um, one of my favorite things that I've been doing lately is putting them in their wagon. I usually take our wonderful, just, it's an expensive wagon, I get that. But for me personally, it is, definitely been worth it. What I usually like to do is set up one seat. So the, the one that I have, which is the W4, it comes with two seats and uh, like a canopy. So I live in the South, it's hot here now. I like to put the canopy up to keep them safe and then I will put one seat in and leave the other one out. So these seats sit two children. So what I've done there is like, I make it to where both of my kids could sit down if they want to, but then either of them could, if I just unbuckle them, they can get up and sort of like, stand up in the wagon if I know we're in a safe area and they love that we go on short walks it's not like they're crazy long but usually it's about a two and a half mile walk that I do with them and although it does give me some anxiety like when we, when we end up on a sidewalk and there's someone else walking my way I've generally learned the straightforwardness to just tell someone like hey let's walk around each other <laughs> you know and in so doing I feel pretty safe going out with my kids and those walks have been so good for me and for them just to like get outside get a deep breath of fresh air see something new I like to do little scavenger hunts with them you know like show me um, like try to find a, a bird's nest or try to find a yellow flower and they it keeps them busy while we're on the walk and allows me to get a longer walk in. I'm gonna say that the most challenging days that I've had during this quarantine have been days that I've been unable to exercise. It just, I had too much going on or we couldn't get outdoors or something. Um, those are the days that quarantine has hit me the hardest. And I always feel like if I just take 30 minutes, just 30 minutes is all you really need to carve out a little bit of time for myself to exercise, focus on my mental health and my physical health and my sanity, get some fresh air if I can, those are the days when I feel so much better. And I would just, I would really encourage you, even if you're not like trying to lose weight or anything like that, exercise is such a good way to get your endorphins going and just feel better. It just makes you feel better. And I think all of us are, if we're not already, probably in the upcoming weeks if things don't change, we are gonna be grappling with some sort of mental health issue, whether it's just a case of the blues or depression, you know, it, it could present in any number of ways, but we do need to be ready to use whatever tools we have available to us to try to keep ourselves in check. And I just, I feel really, really strongly and passionately about the fact that exercise can be such a good way to do that. Um, so I'm gonna link down below just a few of the things that I've been using. I've, in old videos, I've also shown you like the resistance bands that I like to use. I'll go ahead and link those down below because I use those occasionally too. Um, but just give you like a few things to pick from that you could purchase that are all really inexpensive that you can do at home. You don't have to have a gym membership to do. Um, so that in case you're looking for that kind of thing, you could check it out. Since I know that that stair stepper is out of stock, I'm gonna look around on Amazon and see if there's something comparable at the same price point. If so, I will link it down below as well for you. Love ya, mean it, always, Mwah. and I'll see you in the next one.